welcome to our webinar today, Patagonia Cruises with Crisera Sestralis. Uh, we're here today with Jorge Rodriguez, who's going to share a great deal of information about the destination, the ships, and the experience, as well, those of you who are with us today have the opportunity to earn an American Express gift card for your bookings, and Jorge will be telling you more information about that. So, Jorge, over to you. Thank you. Uh, Ali, and thanks uh, for Evelyn being uh, with us here as well. And everybody, uh, um, again, I'm Jorge Rodriguez with Patagonia Cruises. Uh, we explored the um, southernmost part of the uh, South American continent. Uh, and uh, um, what you see in your screen right now is the Darwin Mountain Range. It's one of, one of the excursions that we do uh, that are, we take our passengers in small groups and observe um, uh, the extremity and, uh, um, uh, and the weather and uh, geological formations that you see in the Darwin Mountain Range, uh, which is part of the island of Tierra del Fuego. A little bit um, about our company once this thing starts moving, let's see. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, again, like I said, we sail an area that has a historical value as well. Um, over 400 years of history since Magellan discovered the Strait of Magellan, and then uh, many other explorers uh, roamed the area, sailed around. Uh, uh, for instance, Sir Francis Drake tried to conquer uh, the Strait of Magellan for the English crown. And then the latest, uh, most important one uh, in the past couple of years, a uh, couple hundred years, is uh, Charles Darwin, who actually spent up two years in the area. Uh, so th this, are the, uh, this is what we do. Um, a little bit about our, our company, we have been in business since 1990, sailing the waters around the island of Tierra del Fuego uh, in our own ships. Um, lately, since 2006, uh, we have built uh, two ships that are uh, brand new, one of them the Via Australis and the other one the Stella. The Via was built in 2006 and the Stella uh, started operations in, in December 2010, so it has not been a year since we built uh, these new ships. So both of our ships are new. Our um, our programs are inclusive, and I and I put a uh, asterisk there because uh, we are keeping up with times. We are adding new excursions that are not included. The new one that we added uh, is we have a kayaking excursion in the Darwin Mountain Range, and and in the uh, actually in the uh, uh, in in a in a bay called Wulaya Bay, uh, which is uh, south of the Beagle Channel. Uh, this excursion, I'm going to explain it to you later, but you know, we do go there, everybody goes there and disembarks there, but if you want to rent kayaks, it's going to be an extra charge. That's the only thing that we that we charge on board if you if you choose to, to 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 use it, and the reason is that we have limited amount of kayaks. I think we're going to have 20 of them. So, but you'll see uh, pictures of them later. Um, again, you know, I said that we cross between Chile and Argentina, so you actually get a chance to see both sides of Patagonia in the southernmost edge. Uh, we also own and operate um, other ships, and we also have hotels and offices. Uh, around the world, uh, our Miami uh, U.S.-based office is the, where, I'm, uh, where I'm speaking from. Um, and of course, we have a lot of business from Europe, so there's a Barcelona office and, and our local offices in, uh, in, in, in South America, in Argentina and, uh, and Chile. Uh, I've mentioned that we go to the southernmost edge. Well, this is a picture uh, in Cape Horn. Cape Horn is the southernmost piece of land before you uh, cross the Drake Passage into Antarctica. So uh, literally, we are about 500 miles north of Antarctica when you reach Cape Horn. All our uh, excursions mean disembarking. Uh, sometimes we are fortunate enough and are able to round the horn. This is our, one of our ships uh, rounding the horn. It's not something that's in our brochures. We don't include it. It's something that the captain decides. Uh, to do, and then we do it about 20 or 30 percent of the time, uh, rounding the horn. However, we always attempt to disembark in Cape Horn, and we we are very successful at doing it. We do about 80 percent success rate uh, when in disembarking in Cape Horn. So most likely, if you travel with us, you will disembark in Cape Horn and walk in about for about an hour and a half. 
a couple of things that uh, developed in last year is that we were chosen as one of the top 10 cruises for the new year. So this is for 2011 cruises. Uh, so, uh, we, you know, we were chosen as one of the top 10, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's a high honor to have. We also, last year, were chosen to be one of the 50 tours of a lifetime, and only three cruise products made it to that list. So we're very proud to be one one of the tours of a lifetime that you know everybody who's into uh, our type of travel, adventure, and expeditionary travel, um, it's one of the trips that, that you must take. Um, another a couple of unique things, and I have mentioned some of these. We are, of course, in the southernmost region in the world. Uh, we connect both of Patagonia. So every single one of our trips starts in one country and in, in another. If you start in Chile, you will end in Argentina. If you start in Argentina, you will end up in Chile. Well, what most importantly is when you actually uh, cross, you don't go through immigration, you don't go through customs or any of that stuff. We do it for you. So once you board the vessel, the next thing you do is three or four days later, you are going to enter another country and you are not going to see, you're not going to go through any of the paperwork. And we do it for you in on board. So once you enter the ship, you really are literally crossing the border right there and there, and, uh, and you don't have to deal with it. Um, the historical perspective that I've talked about in Cape Horn and its sailing significance I've talked about already. Another uh, key factor is that when we surround the uh, and this, the, uh, the actual um, uh, the Darwin Mountain Range in Tierra del Fuego, we're actually seeing the, the very, very end of the largest mountain chain in the world the Andes mountain chain, which starts in southern Colombia and go all the way uh, through Tierra del Fuego. And what you're seeing is the end, the southernmost edge of that, uh, of, of that chain. Um, of course, you know, there's plenty of flora and fauna, and we take you to it. We take you to colonies of penguins and elephant seals. We take you to uh, the foot of mountains where you will see glaciers dropping from the, uh, from the mountain range. Uh, when you're combining both sides of Patagonia, our trip is ideal. You will see the southernmost part of both uh, Patagonias, and we will cross you over without seamless, you know, your passengers will not notice anything. So uh, it's a natural crossing uh, that will be perfect to combine in Patagonian circuit seeing both sides of Patagonia. Of course, we offer hotels. We have hotels that we own, uh, and, and we work with uh, many tour operators who offer other hotels. I mean, we are eager to show you all of Patagonia, um, and we have investments in two hotels in the area, uh, but there are hundreds of hotels that you can use. Uh, and of course, we work with travel agents, and that's why we are here. We think that every single travel agent that has an opportunity and wants to sell our product should get on board. We invite you to come on. So uh, please uh, let us know if we can we can have you on. Um, a little bit about geography and the map. Uh, you see, well, of course, the world here, and you see our relationship with the Antarctic Peninsula. I, I, I mentioned that we are about 500 miles uh, north of the Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, well, southern Patagonia, it's uh, you know, it's it's an area uh, that's very large, uh, and and the, some of its characteristics is on the left side, you know, on the border between Chile and, Chile and Argentina, again, is the Andes mountain range. And in this southern part, there are two ice fields. And then there's the southernmost ice field, which is the Darwin mountain range right there in the island of Chile del Fuego. So you see, it's a perfect combination combining both Chile and Argentina and Patagonia around the island of Chile del Fuego all the way down to Cape Horn at the southernmost edge. Uh, well, why southern Patagonia? Of course, we, we talked about some uh, awesome uh, scenery uh, in in the very southernmost extreme uh, part of the world. Uh, well, you see a lot of ice and glaciers, and now a lot of people see this picture and they say this is very cold. Well, it it is not. Uh, uh, we only sail in the summer. Uh, these glaciers are about forty thousand year old, so they actually uh, are there because they're very old. And uh, over the years, that some of them have grown, some of them have receded. Uh, in this area, you know, you see a lot of uh, uh, glacier breaking or calvings. So you see the water sometimes has a lot of icebergs, and that's what we have to navigate through to get you into land. Every time we go into land, and we do this daily, you get to work two to three hours per, uh, you know, per, per, uh, 
per excursion. Some days we have two excursions, and all excursions are done with our own private guide, and they're all done in very small groups. So you know, our passengers, our passenger capacity in, in our ships are between 130 to 200 passengers. However, when you go to a group to a land, to the land, you actually disembark in a small group with your own private guides. So we we'll always be walking in the area, and you, you know, you. you we always try to make sure that uh, people are only part of small groups. We never have 50 plus people at any one point in time. So uh, once we disembark, we go to different spots in the areas, and we walk in always in small groups. And that's what you see in the pictures that I'm about to show you. You will see that people are always in very small groups. Anyhow, this is a picture of the route. Uh, when you go to Punta Arenas, uh, you you can embark on us, or when you go to Ushuaia, you can embark on us. So you know we have two ships doing this back to back every week. Uh, today, every disembarkment out of Punta Arenas, uh, every uh, embarking out of Punta Arenas, every departure from Punta Arenas is a four night departure, and every departure from Ushuaia is a three night departure. And so you see, they're they're very similar. I talked about combinations of Patagonian circuit, and I said that our product is perfect for this because we combine uh, both sides of Patagonia. So you see, for those of you who have studied a little bit about the area, you probably have learned uh, about the uh, uh, Glaciers National Park in Argentina, El Calafate, um, and also you've you've learned about the Piney National Park. Uh, so when you combine those two parts and then go to our park, which is Tierra del Fuego National Park and also the Darwin Mountain Range uh, and Cape Horn National Park, you actually have, have done a, a very nice circuit of the three important things in Southern Patagonia, Paine, uh, Glaciers National Park, and Tierra del Fuego in Southern Patagonia. And that's how you combine them. Well, this is some examples of those national parks. This is the El Chalten Glaciers National Park. Uh, the Moreno Glacier, uh, it's part of that uh, of that park, uh, and it's about an hour from the city of El Calafate, where the airport is. Uh, so you see when your passengers combine a circuit of south, uh, southern Patagonia, you get to see this. This glacier is the site of, and I'll go back to that glacier, it's the site of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, it's one of the fewest glaciers in the world that's still growing, and you see the phenomenon uh, if you can, if you want, you can actually walk on top of that glacier. Uh, you do a navigation around the glaciers and observe the glacier uh, for a few hours and, and, and enjoy the scenery. The other part in Chile is called Paine National Park. These are the horns of the Paine, uh, and these are the towers of the Paine. Uh, you know, these both are hiking parts. However, you can enjoy them without having to be a hiker. Uh, if you're a hiker, you can spend hours doing uh, around these mountains. If you're not, then you can do band tours around the area, and they all have beautiful views of what you're seeing now. Uh, the Via Australis, a smaller vessel, 130 passenger capacity, and I will have some pictures of it. This is the deck plan of the Mare Australis. Again, 64 cabins, about 130 passenger capacity. All our cabins our uh, outside cabins all have very large windows, all have private bathrooms. Uh, and we have four different categories, and they differ really where they're located in the ship. And, uh, you know, so it's basically the, it's the same cabin size. You cannot tell if this is an AAA or AAA cabin, because all I can say is that it's an AAA, AAA, and it's a twin bedded cabin. Some of our cabins have double beds, but they are uh, far in between, so they're not, uh, we have a few beds with double side. However, we put together the two twins all the time at the request of our passengers to make it a king size, and we make it in a nice fashion. We use one sheet, and we do it uh, very, you know, solidly, solidly uh, uh, put together in the bottom so they don't move. Uh, and, uh, well, anyhow, a little bit about the Via Australis, again, a, built, uh, a ship that was built in 2006. Uh, with plenty uh, ample spaces for common areas. Uh, this is the Sky Lounge or our main bar. Uh, I mentioned that it's an all-inclusive uh, product, so it's open bar. Uh, and I will mention one thing that we just added this uh, this season that's not included in the price. And it's uh, you know I will I will say that down down the presentation. But you know again I wanted to emphasize that we still are all inclusive in terms of you know all ex all most excursions 
uh, all meals in, in on, on open bar scenario. Um, again, uh, we do give a lot of lectures on board. We have a, a highly educational uh, uh, staff that you know it's always involved in giving presentations about the area, the history, uh, glacier uh, behavior. Uh, flora and fauna of the area and so forth. And they're done in, the, in our wonderful lounges. This is another one of the relaxing lounges that we have in the V Australis. Uh, our furniture is beautiful. Really, uh, the interior of our ships are, uh, some of them have uh, been award-winning uh, in architectural design. And, uh, and they all have very large windows. Every single lounge has is designed for you to relax inside the lounge, read, and never lose sight of the wonderful scenery that surrounds you. Uh, so that's what our lounges are for. We always have an open bridge policy, and our ships are equipped with the state-of-the-art uh, equipment for navigation. So you know you always have are in good hands with us. Uh, our dining rooms, um, you, uh, they're all one seating. Uh, remember, we're in a small cruise ship, so you know it's only up to 200 passengers, and we always do one sitting, so everybody seats uh, at one time, and uh, and of course, you know, a wonderful meals and so forth. <coughs> the Stella Australis, our newest ship, the one built in 2010, is a little bit larger, with a capacity of 198 passengers exactly. And this vessel was built uh, with all this, you know, state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, designed uh, in the similar fashion of our, four, of our smaller ships. Uh, and the Stella, again, you know, this is uh, accommodations are, you know, for more people, up to uh, 198. And, uh, and again, three cabin categories, and they really differ where they're located. Now, cabins on the Stella are a bit larger to compare. The, the V Australis cabin size is 161 square feet, whereas the Stella is 177 square feet. Most of our cabins on the Stella is 177 square feet. Now, the Stella also features four superior rooms, two on the double A area and two on the triple A areas. And these are larger rooms, uh, and this is a picture of one of them. Uh, that you know they they have a queen size bed. These are the only cabins in all our fleet that have queen size beds, and there's only four of them. Uh, and again, uh, they're uh, they're featured in the different uh, um, decks uh, in two different decks. And now this uh, is also a regular cabin, uh, you know, double twin bedded cabin, uh, and you can see the difference in the windows uh, from the first one to. Uh, the second one, this again is the uh, a AAA cabin superior, whereas this is a double A cabin uh, twin uh, bedded. And you see that the, the size of the windows is tiny, uh, tiny larger because it doesn't go from floor to ceiling, but it is uh, still larger windows than the Via. So in general, everything is bigger, bigger on the Stella than on the Via, including the windows. And not that our windows on the Via are smaller. But these ones are very, very, very big windows, almost taking most of the wall outside. So um, anyhow, uh, another picture of the, uh, of the Stella cabins, uh, again, with larger windows. And this is some of the um, lounges and common areas in the Stella. Uh, again, as the, the, uh, the, all our lounges are, you know, um, have plenty of windows and they're designed for you to enjoy the scenery even if you stay inside the ship. Uh, again, you know, all our meals uh, are uh, international food and uh, uh, this is the, uh, the dining room on the Stella Australis uh, which has, again, a capacity of 198 pa passengers. But also the Stella dining room has uh, a little different uh, structure or design. Uh, we, we have put uh, tables of four passengers, six passengers, and eight passengers, as opposed to on the VIA only have eight passengers tables. So uh, the difference is that it, may, it gives you a little more of a restaurant feel. Uh, you can have uh, a couple sitting down on a four-passenger uh, table as opposed to a big group, if that's what you wish. So it gives you more flexibility sitting down on the, on the dinner on, this, on the Stella Australis. Now, this is some pictures of the Stella uh, as you can see here, this is the shop. Uh, this is the Sky Lounge, which is the main bar, very similar to the one on the V Australis. Uh, and uh, 
uh, this, an, another view of the Sky Lounge on top of the ship on the Stella. Uh, you can see it's a little different. And then it has a smaller lounge that's called the Yamana on the Stella that only holds about 50 passengers. It's a very private room. It looks almost feel like a yacht uh, experience, as you can see, like a private yacht experience. And that's, that's, that, that gives you uh, possibly to have a small meetings and so forth. I mean, this is the uh, the crew, uh, actually the expedition team that takes you to land every day. So you would be part of a group that will be headed by one of these people. Uh, they're very, very familiar with the area and they're the ones that will be teaching you, giving you lectures and giving you walks in the wilderness and you you know you'll be part of a group headed by one of these people. And so these, these are the what you would call cruise directors or so forth, but they're the ones in charge of the expeditions and the lectures. Anyhow, uh, when you go uh, on uh, on land, we disembark every day, so we suggest that you stay very comfortable and casual, and even during dinners, you're, there's no uh, required uh, attire. Uh, we actually rather prefer that you're comfortable, and so we suggest that you bring in all these things uh, to to remain comfortable and you know uh, um, at least sure where where you're going to be walking in wilderness and so forth. Um, anyhow, a little bit about some detail of our, of our programs. Uh, our Punta Arenas to Ushuaia four night program has uh, starts in Punta Arenas and then we uh, actually uh, I'm gonna okay in Punta Arenas is a, it's a city right on the on the edge of the uh, Strait of Magellan is a very colorful city. Uh, we embark here, and then we head down to Ainsworth Bay. In Ainsworth Bay, we actually visit uh, a glacier that's called Marinelli Glacier. And this glacier, uh, also, uh, when we disembark, you know, we do a walk in the wilderness, uh, visiting, uh, you know, the, the wilderness that's really on the edge of this glacier that you see here. That's called the Marinelli Glacier. But also we visit a, a colony of elephant seals here. So you know, they, in the same excursion, you see actually three different things. You see the glacier, uh, you see the forest and other animals in the area, and you see a colony of elephant seals that goes there and spend the summer there. So it's a it's a colony that's been documented by National Geographic. It's the largest uh, elephant seal colony in southern Patagonia. Our passengers get to walk nearby them, and you see the behavior of these animals. Uh, of course, coupled with the talks and, and uh, teachings of our our uh, expedition leaders, that will tell you uh, a little bit more about these animals and how they, how they behave, and so forth. So you get to learn a lot. And that same particular that same day, when we visit Aceworth Bay, on the way out of the field, we stop at our colony of a small colony of penguins, where uh, it's called Toker Islet, and we we see how penguins and other birds cohabitate in this island uh, where that they share. Uh, some of them are predators of the penguins. But anyhow, uh, it's a small colony, and we don't disembark in that colony because it's so small that we don't want to hunt it. That's about three or four or 4,000 animals. We actually approach the beach with the zodiacs, and they actually come to you. So you see the penguins very close, but you just won't, won't walk among, amongst them. The reason I say that is because on our three nights, we have an expedition where we stop at a colony of 120,000 penguins, and you'll disembark in that colony. Uh, so that's a different uh, this environment. I'll have a picture of that one too. Anyhow, um, along the way, we are see, we see many uh, other animals like uh, <coughs> dolphins. Toninas are southern dolphins, uh, so they accompany uh, along the way all, all the time. Uh, we also stop at a glacier called Pia Glacier, where we actually get a chance to go. Uh, on top of a rock and observe the glacier for for a couple of hours, uh, you know, between disembarking and walking and uh, observing the glacier at very close distance, uh, it's about a couple hours expeditions and you know again, all in small groups, we get a chance to actually sit down and observe the glacier from a very close perspective and that's that's very unique in our area. Remember these fjords. Uh, are very uh, narrow and shallow. You have to have a small ship to go in here. Uh, none of the big ships will ever have a chance to, to get down here. Uh, it takes uh, a, a few hours to go inside the fjord and then disembark in there. Uh, 
it's a national park. You need to have special rights, and we do have them. And so anyhow, this is where the PI is really surrounding the island of Tierra del Fuego on the western side until we hit the Beagle Channel, which is now you see you get into more common territory where some of the big ships go by. It's called Avenida de los Glaciares or uh, Glacier Alley. And you will see a series of five, six uh, glaciers that are named after, after countries of explorers that found the glaciers. And, uh, we have a nice little program observing these, in these glaciers. Uh, and then on the way down, uh, after we uh, get out of the Beagle Channel, we, we go uh, into southern territory to, to actually visit Cape Horn. And that's when we, uh, you know, we arrive in Cape Horn in the early in the morning on the last day. Uh, and we get to disembark there very early in the morning and be able to uh, you know, walk up the 100, about 140 steps to, to actually see the the island on top, uh, Cape Horn Island. You know, we get to some bar there's all dry landings. You see, we use a platform where you get to walk outside of the zodiac and then get to, uh, you know, walk up the steps and, and then be on top of the island where you'll visit some monuments of the area. Monuments of Cape Horn, you know, it's you know it's the southernmost point on, on, on the continent. So so you get to walk around the area uh, and see, uh, you know, learn about the history of Cape Horn, and then go inside the house of the people that take care of the lighthouse. And that this is uh, the actual people that take care of the house. You actually might want to send a postcard, so you get it stamped here. Uh, you get to buy some goodies there if you want. You see, this is the southernmost cha chapel in the world. Uh, remember, this area, nobody lives there, just these two people that handle, you know, take care of the lighthouse. And then in Mulaya, on the way back, uh, we actually stop at a, a confirmed Darwin uh, site and also an indigenous site, uh, and this is Mulaya Bay. This is the place where we're going to have kayaks. You see the water, the bay there? Well, you know, this year we're starting with uh, some kayaks expeditions. Uh, again, I'd like to point out this is the only excursion that's not included. It's new, and there's only about 20 kayaks, so we need to put a price on them to, so that you know not everybody will be able to have you know have the chance to to do them. But those of you who are eager to do a one to a one and a half hour expedition of kayaks with our own with our own guys, you'll you'll be able to do that. And they, again, these are pictures taken. A couple of days ago, uh, the program probably will start before the end of the year, and uh, and so that's that's what the the passengers will be able to do uh, if they choose to do that. Uh, other than that, you'll be able to disembark in Walaya and do a walk up uh, into the uh, a hill, and then uh, it's a hike about an hour and a half hike, uh, and what that is included. So uh, so uh, in Walaya, we do have an excursion that's included. It's just that the kayaks are new, and we only have 20 of them, and there'll be there'll be an extra charge for that. So the arrival of Swaya, and that is it. You know, uh, remember I mentioned that we have a four-night program from Punta Arenas, and a three-night program that starts in Oswaya. So this is in Oswaya now, and uh, that's the town of Oswaya. If you embark here, uh, the most important, you know, in addition to going to Cape Horn. And Wulaya Bay again, and then we see a site where you'll see some glaciers. We also see uh, a colony of 120,000 penguins. So you know, again, if you go back, you re track back, uh, you'll do Cape Horn, Wulaya, a glacier site in the Darwin Mountain Range, and then the last thing you'll see is a colony of 120,000 penguins, and you get to walk amongst them. So this is excursion includes uh, walking amongst the penguin, uh, you know, and observing their behavior with our own private guides and, and so forth. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's about it. I, uh, I I have some pictures of some, some of the wildlife in the area that you see here. So you have a sense of what is, uh, you know, what, what your passenger or you will feel when you go down in here, in this area that's completely remote, about 13 thousand people get to visit this area every year only. It's very exclusive. Uh, again, we only go in small groups. You'll be part of either 130 or 200 passengers in the ship. And when you disembark, you'll only be a group. You know, part, you will form part of a group of no more than 15, 20 passengers per guy. So it's always the yacht uh, 
uh, a, you know, small sh uh, ship experience uh, where you get to meet everybody. And when you are doing the excursions and the expeditions, you have a real feeling of being in the remote area with very few people around with you. And uh, that's part of, uh, you know, the characteristics of our programs. Uh, a couple of pictures, more pictures I have. And this is very important because we are actually incentivizing travel agents who book with us. And you don't have to book directly with us. You can book with your, your usual uh, travel supplier, tour operator. We, w we work with many tour operators in the U.S. Uh, and uh, so we encourage you to work with your tra travel supplier and we'll still honor, uh, you know, a $100 uh, American Express card uh, if you book uh, uh, between now and uh, March 31st. Uh, for travel in 2012. So uh, go ahead, uh, you know, uh, get your clients uh, uh, excited, uh, uh, work a program for them using your travel supplier, uh, design an experience of a lifetime for them, uh, visit Southern Patagonia, that's an area that's uh, truly uh, uh, awesome and exciting, uh, a combination of glaciers, geography, geology, history, uh, and the southernmost part of the world. And then, of course, the animal colonies that we bring you to are now always on a small cruise ship experience, uh, and, uh, and you will have an experience of a lifetime. Uh, I think I have a slide with uh, some contact information. Uh, anyhow, well, you can book us uh, again. I mentioned any any of the ways that that that, that you are familiar with. Um, you know, in uh, and we work. You know, we we're here to help you. Uh, we'd like you to you know work with uh, whoever you feel comfortable with, uh, and uh, and you know give us a call. We are here uh, in normal hours. Uh, that's our 800 number. We have a, a phone in Santiago. Uh, and uh, so, you know, uh, this destination sometimes requires a lot of questions and, and answers. And we are here to help you uh, along the way to make sure that you have all the tools necessary to bring them to your customer and passenger to, you know, so that they have a, a, an altogether good experience. Uh, this is our call. And uh, please let us know if uh, we can help you at any time. So, I, uh, Lee, I think I'm uh, I'm done. Um, if we have any questions, we'll be more than eager to go ahead and, and answer them now. Probably you already have some questions regarding, you know, using our, our chatting. But uh, but anyhow, I'm available for a few more minutes uh, for questions and answers. Okay, great. Well, Evelyn's done a great job of answering questions, but I think there are a few here that are worth repeating for, so that sure. everyone can benefit. This question came in, are the three and four night tours different? So would it be worthwhile to do both of them back to back? They are different, except there's one day uh, that is always repeated, and that is uh, the, uh, the Cape Horn Day which also includes Wolaya Bay. Uh, it's a day that's that's included in both excursions, and the reason for that is that it is the single one uh, expedition that people rave about and always talk good about it. Uh, you know, everybody likes Wolaya expeditions, but there's there's one that everybody really says. You know, people because it's a combination of expectations of always you know wanting to go to Cape Horn, the last piece of land in the, in the hemisphere. Uh, you know, for those of you that keep can't handle the, the sailing into Antarctica, uh, that would be the last point where they reach. Uh, a lot of people are into sailing, and that is one of the most important sailing feats uh, for anybody who is into sailing, rounding the horn, and so forth. So people have a lot of good expectations, and when they actually do the Martin Cave Horn, uh, they have a great experience. Uh, so. Uh, that's why we always include it there. So to answer the question, yes, I mean, uh, you could do a seven nights with the understanding that you would be repeating uh, Cape Horn and Wolaya. That day will be repeated, uh, you know, in, in every single one of them. Okay. Great. Um, Josh, the question here about what tour operators you work with, and I know that the list is very long, and I'm putting you on the spot because there's a chance <laughs> you might forget someone. 
But, well, um, you know, I'm, I have, uh, I'm working on some presentations. I have some, some list uh, here that I want to make sure that, I, you know, I mean, I, I will definitely miss, uh, you know, uh, people, but, uh, but uh, I mean, I can, uh, look, I, I, can, I, I can start with Abercrombie and Ken, uh, Big Five, Go Away, Kensington, Turkan in Canada, um, uh, Colette, uh, Locations. Brendan Avanti, uh, let's see, Geographic Expeditions, Mountain Travel, Sobek, Wilderness, uh, Globus, um, Holbrook, Ladatko, um, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm missing some, but, uh, but you know, I've, I think I've said enough. Uh, Odysseys uh, works with us as well, Odysseys on, on Limited, um, Off the Beaten Path, Adventure Life Journeys, uh, I think I've, I've said another, Yampu, uh, Borella Travel, Maxime Tours works with us, uh, Wildland Vacations, Wild, Wildland Adventures. Uh, I think, you know, I've probably left a few, but, uh, that you know, the, most of them are there. Yeah, VIP Tour Group, Michael, he's with us. Yes, VIP, right? I'm sorry, VIP Tour Groups here in uh, Trafcoa as well. Um, uh, who else? Let's see. You have general tours on your list. General tours is not on our list. Okay. All right. Well, that's a, that is probably not an entire list, but that's a lot. That is that's quite a bit. So thank uh -huh. you for going through that list with us. Mm -hmm. um, all right. A question here about um, seasick. Do people get seasick? Uh, people um, look. Uh, I'll give you some data. Uh, we disembark in Cape Horn 80% of our time, and that's year over year, and there's no particular month that's better than the other. So in other words, it doesn't matter where you go. On average, between 75 and 85% of the time, we are able to disembark in Cape Horn. Uh, having said that, to disembark somebody in Cape Horn requires for us to anchor the ship about a mile out and put four zodiacs or six zodiacs in the water and put 12 passengers on each zodiac and do that trip two or three times each. So when you are able to put 12 passengers on a rubber boat, you know, uh, and uh, take them down, the, down one mile into a cove to the Zambar, that tells you that 80% of the time the waters are very calm because the captain, when the, the waters are not calm, that's that 20% when he decides that he's not letting that happen. So. In general, all our sailing is very, very calm, no movement. Cape Horn gives us a little challenging opportunity. However, 80% of the time we are able to beat it. So in other words, 80% of the time, even in Cape Horn, it's calm enough. The rest of the time, it's pretty much it's a lot like river cruising, a lot like it's, it's, it's protected channels. If you look at the map, it's mostly a lot of fjords and, and channels that are you know, very little movement. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, I think everyone's done a great job answering a lot of these questions. Uh, there's a question here about whether it's been recorded, and yes, indeed, we are recording today, so we'll make sure that we get that link out to all of you who may not have been with us right at the beginning. A uh, question here, Jorge, maybe we'll make this our last, a question about um, travel agent rates. Do you offer travel agent rates? Yes, of course. We are, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, we welcome all of you uh, travel agents uh, to come with us. I think it's you know it's almost necessary for you to convey the experience to your passengers uh, that you come along. So we do have some, several programs. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you have a you know a lot of following, you know, on on this type of travel, and I find uh, a sailing that's open, I will, you know, even even give it uh, a complimentary, uh, provided that you pay the taxes. It's a $30 tax charge that every passenger has to pay. So that is uh, as little as that. Now, sometimes we, we can offer, uh, you know, if we're, uh, you know, getting to be full and so forth, we still encourage travel agents to come, and we offer like $100 per night per person. Uh, you know, for those travel agents that want to come, and we are starting to get full, and we can't give it to you free, and so forth. And then, you know, if we're almost nearly full, then we offer anything from 50% off to 
30% off. So we do have several programs, depending on how we do it with availability. Uh, but again, there's no question that we welcome pass, uh, travel agents. We want all of them to come, if you can. Uh, and we'll do our best to make sure that it's an easier experience for you to come. It's necessary for travel agents to come. We're, of, cr of course, travel agent uh, friendly. We, we pay commissions, uh, you know, and uh, just, uh, you know, and we encourage our, all our tour uh, operators and travel suppliers to pay travel agent commissions. So, you know, we, we are, we want to make sure that travel agents are included in our, in our model. Great. Thank you, Jorge. Well, this has been a really terrific presentation, and um, it's always a pleasure spending time with you and learning more about um, this beautiful part of the world. So I'll just turn it back over to you now for anything else that you might like to add or recap. Sure. Um, a couple of things. Um, we, um, I, you know, I forgot to mention it, uh, and I don't have it in my presentation. We, but we are uh, the newest member of uh, Virtuoso Vast. Uh, VAST programs. Uh, for those of you who know, well, you know, but for us, if you don't know, it's just, you know, Virtuoso and it's the uh, Virtuoso Adventure, you know, division. Um, and uh, so uh, that is one thing. And the other thing is that uh, we, um, in next season, 2012-13, we are changing a little bit one of our ship's programs. Instead of doing four and three nights, we'll be doing four and four nights. So in any, any words, the return from Ushuaia will be also four nights. So that will change a little bit of the itineraries and the programs that we offer. That will, you know, the details of that will come, uh, you know, down the road. Uh, but, you know, just be expect, expecting some changes in that. But those, those two things, and, and again, you know, I won't, uh, uh, you know, I can't say it enough. I mean, we welcome you to come aboard. We think uh, our destination is it's awesome. Uh, we're very proud of it. Only few people get to see it. I think we have to have our travel professionals, you know, uh, uh, make a point, you know, to their travelers that it is an area that, uh, you know, you won't want to miss. You want to come down and see Southern Patagonia. We, we know how to show it best. Great. Thanks a lot Thank for everybody. You.